Thanks to Dave Fisher and his team for making this space available uh, to us. A lot of epic moments have occurred in this building, and we think we're uh, uh, standing here with another one to talk about here today. Uh, I'm Bruce Kendall, the President and CEO of your Economic Development Board for Tacoma Pierce County. Again, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Amazon Delivery Room. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce that today we will be delivering to Amazon our proposal for their second headquarters. Six weeks ago, the company put forth a comprehensive request for proposals seeking responses from cities and regions across North America. The size and impact of this opportunity are indeed unprecedented. The project will be transformational. It means 50,000 jobs, high paying jobs, a $5 billion capital investment, and 8 million square feet of office space. More importantly, it gives the winning community a chance to embrace and grow with Amazon as it continues its innovative rise as an internet retailer and technology company. We share Amazon's laser focus on customer satisfaction, passion for invention, commitment to operational excellence, and long-term thinking. We know this is a team game, and I want to recognize three of the leaders who stepped up immediately to embrace creating the Tacoma South Sound proposal. Tacoma's Mayor Marilyn Strickland, Pierce County Executive Bruce Dammeyer, and Congressman Derek Kilmer. Amazon's RFP specifically asked for a community with elected officials eager and willing to work with the company. I am confident in saying that our elected leaders who are with us here today on this project walk the walk. I wouldn't trade them for anyone else in this region or across North America. You'll be hearing from each of them shortly and we are all available for questions after they speak. We work together to assemble a team of 50 people drawn from real estate, education, workforce development, government, utilities, the arts, tourism, higher education, K-12, transportation, economic development, health services, and more. These experts work together to craft a proposal that exceeds Amazon's requirements. A special shout out to Dan Trimble and Sarah Bonds, the EDB's team leaders on this project, and Ellie Wachowiak with the City of Tacoma, whose expertise was invaluable. The other 47 people who worked on this baby, we love you too, but I can't list you all here this morning. Not the least of which, however, are J. Ray and DCI, our two Cracker Jack consultants. Today, we say to Amazon, welcome home because we know that HQ2's fit with Tacoma Pierce County is ideal. Starting with downtown Tacoma, the jewel in the crown, and reaching out across Pierce County, we have unparalleled build-out options and amenities. We are close enough to the first headquarters to engender real collaboration and far enough away to encourage intra-company competition and Amazon hallmark. Amazon has uh, achieved Tremendous innovation, growth, and game-changing customer service. service. HQ2 must enhance and accelerate the company's drive for operational excellence, and that is precisely what this proposal provides. Tacoma South Sound offers a winning combination of an accelerated time to construction, world-class tech and business talent, global connections, and a community with the spirit of invention ready to boldly shape its future with Amazon. As we say, we have the connections that deliver. Now, please do join me in welcoming the first person who called me when the Amazon RFP hit the streets, <laughs> Mayor Marilyn Strickland. Good morning, everyone. This is an incredibly rare opportunity very seldom do companies the size of Amazon decide that they want to solicit an RFP and invite cities who are interested to participate. It would have been incredibly easy for the leaders of Amazon to pick up the phone, call a handful of mayors, and say, I want the three or four of you to compete. But they left it wide open for a reason. They like competition because they know competition gives everyone a better product. It makes everyone raise their game, 
step up. And I can tell you with certainty that the Tacoma South Sound proposal is evidence that Tacoma Pierce County has indeed stepped up for the challenge. And I'm incredibly proud of that. Now in the press recently, there was a comment made that said, not everyone wants to live in the Pacific Northwest. That's true. But let me tell you who does. The best and the brightest. With our universities, our quality of life, our environmental ethos, our openness to people who want to marry who they love. The fact that we believe in climate change and that we know we have a responsibility to do something about it, to leave a place better for our children than the one we inherited. People want to live here for a reason. It's why Seattle Tacoma International Airport is the fastest growing airport in the country. It's why we live one of the fastest growing regions in the entire USA. So when we look at the opportunity for Amazon, let me be clear. We are not seeking salvation. We want a partner to grow with us. We are growing. People want to move here. Good things are happening. You're standing here today at the Pantages Theater, which is really the cornerstone of Tacoma's revitalization that started some 20 years ago. Tacoma is now a leader in education, the arts, and environmental stewardship. And we believe that Amazon HQ2 belongs here in the Puget Sound region, but especially in Tacoma and the South Sound. As far as growth goes, we can handle it. I've once lamented that Tacoma's downtown footprint was way too big for a city our size. But guess what? It's just right for Amazon HQ2. When we think about the possibility of attracting more growth, we have a lot of housing options. Whether you choose to live somewhere in Pierce County in one of our outlying cities, or right here in Tacoma in one of our great diverse neighborhoods, we can accommodate growth. But this isn't necessarily 50,000 people moving to Tacoma South Sound. We have the talent pool right here already that commutes to other tech jobs outside of Pierce County. As co-chair with Bruce Dammeyer and Tom Pearson with The Place for Jobs, we've talked about making it our mission to ensure that people who live in Tacoma and the South Sound don't have to drive north every day to go to work. Having Amazon HQ2 will help us fulfill that mission. So as I said earlier, we are growing. We are proud of who we are. We value diversity. We value immigrants and refugees and don't view them as people to be feared. We view them as assets to our community. Tacoma was the first city on the West Coast to become a welcoming city. And with all those assets, including our incredible K-12 public school system, which now has a high school graduation rate that exceeds the state average, we know we are poised for growth that is phenomenal in technology, in the arts, in marketing, in administration, in finance, all the different functions that Amazon will need, and of course, IT. So grow with us, join us, and let's be your partner. We're far enough away to be creative, competitive, innovative, but we're close enough to collaborate. Grow with us and stay here because there's no place like home and Amazon HQ2 belongs right here in the Puget Sound. Thank you. Good morning, I'm County Executive Bruce Dammeyer and I am privileged to stand before you and to partner with Tacoma and Maryland and the Economic Development Board today. This is a great day. I would echo Maryland's comments that Amazon could have done this very differently. They could have called a few. I don't know if they intended this or not, but the way they did do it, I can tell you for us, it, it allowed us to come together as a broader community to look at the assets of Tacoma, of Puyallup, of Lakewood, and to find and to see the richness that we can offer together. It is a very exciting opportunity to, to explore those things and address that. So when you look at the offering, and I'm not going to tell you what's inside, but when you look at that offering, right, we've got sites ready today in Tacoma for Class A office space to meet their needs. We've got a data center today in Puyallup ready to meet their needs. We've got sites for fulfillment and manufacturing in Sumner, in Lakewood, in DuPont ready today to meet their needs. So we can move and hit the ground running right now in a collaborative way that hasn't been done before and I think is, I'm really excited for that challenge. The second thing to, to build on what the mayor said and what Bruce said about close enough to compete, but or close enough to collaborate, but far enough away to compete, I would say that 
that what we have here is what I would call Northwest values and then some. And the things that I would point out is I would highlight to Amazon that our community has a rich connection to Japan, to Korea, to the Pacific world that is much stronger and deeper, I think, than even King County and the world that, that HQ1 is located in. That is a key asset for who we are and for them moving forward. The, the second thing, and I think it stems from that, is our strong connection to Joint Base Lewis McCord. I think that that brings a talented workforce that the kind that Amazon hasn't traditionally seen. When you think about folks who have a proven work ethic, who are leaders, who are technically trained, who understand teamwork and competition like many of us don't, right? They get that at their core. And then the last thing that I would highlight in terms of workforce is when you look demographically, it's very interesting. Our workforce here in Pierce County is a little older, a little more toward the 30-somethings than the 20-somethings, but what that brings is a stability that most businesses really value as they become a little bit more mature, right? As they're looking at how they work for the next 10 years. And that's also why, as the mayor pointed out, we can brag very strongly about Tacoma schools, Bethel schools, Franklin Pierce schools, Puyallup schools. People come here to, to work, but also to live to raise their families, and they want those systems, they want that community that they can live in and, and, and be part of. And that leads to probably my, my closing comments, and that is, this is an amazing community, some of which I think Amazon has some familiarity with, but even better, when you talk about quality of life and quality community, when you talk about living in the north end of Tacoma or in Gig Harbor, when you're talking about riding horses out in Graham or hiking Mount Rainier, when you talk about racing dragon boats on the Foss Waterway, right, or sailing around Fox Island, those things are pretty unique to this place that we call home. And that is especially amazing as we look forward. So I would close with one comment, and I, and I want to echo the, the comment. And, and having served in the military and seen the number of folks that request assignment up here, and then when separating from the military, choose to remain in our community. You know, there was that well-quoted comment from that Amazon executive that not everybody wants to live in the Northwest. And I would say that might be true, but it's mostly because they haven't lived here yet, and if they had the choice, they would. Thank you very much. Oh, and it's... And it's my pleasure to introduce a gentleman that I have collaborated with in the legislature, a tremendous leader in the field of economic development, our Congressman Derek Kilmer. Hi, everybody. Um, it's good to be with you today. I, 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 I think I speak for many of us in that we've seen Amazon grow up with us and with our families. Um, it feels like for years not a week has gone by where we haven't had that box on our doorstep when we've come home. And since I'm an economic development guy, I'm a numbers guy, I decided to tabulate it and um, and looked at how much my family and I have spent with Amazon over the years. And it's quite tempting to just simply say, Amazon, you owe me. Uh, and then sit down, but I'm not gonna do that because uh, frankly, um, beyond the Kilmer family shopping, we've got a lot of selling points uh, for Tacoma and Pierce County beyond um, just the consumer habits of my children. Uh, listen, there. There has not, um, I mentioned those, those cardboard boxes. Those are indicators of just the amazing success of Amazon. It's why Amazon is ready for HQ2. And just like Amazon, Tacoma and Pierce County, we deliver too. Uh, we have barreled past roadblocks and naysayers 
to deliver a revitalized city and county through partnerships. We've shown we can deliver. Uh, local leaders have tapped into our big potential and have done big things. You know, Amazon and others will find affordable housing and cultural and recreational experiences and a revitalized waterfront. Those amenities, including the historic theater that we're sitting in today, exemplifies the partnerships that this community can put together and our ability to deliver. You know, local leaders saw a polluted Puget Sound and we didn't throw up our hands, we rolled up our sleeves and are hard at work on restoring that iconic body of water. Our community is connected. We juggled multiple partners, the United States Department of Transportation, Sound Transit, Pierce County, the city of Tacoma, and made key investments in mobility like the light rail that connect folks uh, to opportunities to live and work and play. We connect people to jobs and amenities every single day in this community. Our region thinks big. We are dreamers, we are doers, we are innovators, we have awesome companies. Not just doing business here, but starting here and growing here. You know, Tacoma Pierce County leadership grew and expanded a pipeline of talented workers from K-12 all the way through higher education. Tacoma Public Schools is not just bringing up graduation rates. It has sparked skills in science, technology, engineering, and math in all of their students. Where else will you find a science and math institute where students master advanced skills with the help of the local zoo and aquarium and other leading institutions. We have connections that deliver here. University of Washington Tacoma is producing scores of talented graduates from its Institute of Technology. Their graduates are fueling success in local businesses right here and right now through partnerships we know how to deliver. Tacoma Community College with support from our federal government has blossomed a cybersecurity center to provide hands-on knowledge and skills in systems and data, networking, and security concepts. Amazon has shown a profound commitment to hiring veterans. And with a steady population of transitioning veterans from Joint Base Lewis McCord and Naval Base Kitsap, our region boasts a ready workforce of patriotic men and women with skills and work ethic and many with advanced degrees from robotics to IT. But if that's not enough, beyond the fact that you will find movers and shakers, you will find talented workers, and you will find stunning views, Yelp named Tacoma one of America's most romantic cities. <laughs> so I think I just have to end by saying, Amazon, say yes to the dress. <laughs> and. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite up uh, uh, the other speakers so we, can, uh, so we can hand off the package. All right, so gather around, Mayor, County Executive, Congressman, and I'm going to ask uh, Dan Trimble and Sarah Bonds to come up. There are in-house couriers from the EDB, so you guys kind of walk, and we're going to have an awkward moment where we hand the box off. Uh, this actually has the proposal in it, and it's sealed only for Amazon's eyes, so here we go. We're going to do this now. Um, so this is an opportunity uh, for questions, more pictures with Dan and Sarah. Um, uh, questions, why don't we all stay up here and if the members of the media have any questions they want to uh, call out, we're happy to take those and, and maybe name who you'd like to answer them. And if any of our other guests would like to ask questions, we're happy to do that. So the proposal is confidential. Can you talk about that? The request for proposals from the company uh, indicated that it was to be a confidential response. Uh, we can talk in broad parameters, and you heard some of that here today. Uh, but the specifics, uh, particularly on the eight uh, elements of uh, the deliverables, are uh, between our organization and our team and Amazon. So uh, that's pretty typical of requests for proposals. What's atypical is that this was a very public request for proposal. That is unusual in our business. I actually can't remember another time when it was when one was as public as this. So great question. I will say the RFP was incredibly comprehensive and beautifully written. 
Uh, we really didn't have any questions about what they were asking. They were very, very clear. I'll ask the mayor and the county executive and Derek to answer that. So I wouldn't necessarily describe it as extra steps. I think that we just had to emphasize some key points in the story that we're telling. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a reason that this is one of the fastest growing regions in the entire United States. And people are choosing to live here. And I think a lot of it is based on our values. It's based on our lifestyle. And it's based on opportunity. And I think for a lot of folks who are moving here, I've heard people say they're actually climate change refugees coming to an area where the climate is relatively moderate and comfortable for the most part. And they like being here. So I think a lot of it is a lifestyle choice that people are making. And, and I would say that it played into the story that we have to offer, particularly this, this close enough to collaborate but far enough way to compete. This we're like them but different enough that it can build their organization. So I think that it helped us emphasize those points. I think this is another one the mayor and the county executive. Yeah. So I, I think the first thing I want to say is I don't think that Amazon is responsible for the affordable housing crisis in Seattle. There are many factors that contribute to that. And the simple one is that it's just supply and demand. There are so many people who want to live there that they don't have enough housing to accommodate everyone. But the one thing I will say that's really exciting about our proposal is that Tacoma and the South Sound, we have the capacity to grow. Our region has a lot of people, but our region actually has a lot of land where we can build more housing, multifamily housing, and even in Tacoma alone, you see a lot of housing happening. I mean, I'm going to another groundbreaking sometime tomorrow. And so as we look at affordable housing, we want to do a couple of things. Number one, we need to make sure that people have jobs that pay well. That's the best way to solve the affordable housing crisis. Number two, we want to make sure if there are incentives down in Olympia that need to be cal recalibrated to incentivize more developers to build more affordable housing, let's work with Olympia to find out if the tax incentive that we have now needs some recalibration. But to be honest with you, it's supply and demand. It's getting people more jobs that pay well so they can afford it. And it's having good transportation options so you don't have to rely on always owning two cars and having to pay for maintenance and gas. I would just add to that with a little bit, and this is about, the thing that's exciting about this is this is about giving our citizens the opportunity to both live and work in Tacoma and Pierce County. We got about 99,000 people that commute north every day. What an opportunity to give them to get a, a good family wage job here where they can have the full quality of life that they want to have, have the house, have the family, coach softball, you know, and a fulfilling job as opposed to spending three hours a day on I-5 in whatever mode they're traveling. And I want to add one thing too because I think that when you hear the term, when you hear people say it's 50,000 new jobs, I think there's an assumption that it means an influx of 50,000 people. There are a lot of people who live here already who are qualified to do the work and if you think about the number of housing, the housing we would need, it would be somewhere around 20,000 units. So I think when we think about 50,000 new jobs, we have to give it some context and perspective. Incentives were one of the deliverables we had to address, and we believe we've addressed it very successfully. It includes some existing incentives that are available to other companies that are already in the market or looking to come into the market. Uh, there are some prospective incentives that we included because the RFP asked to, us to project whether there could be some additional incentives uh, that can be used for Amazon and also for other companies. We do have some of those that, that is confidential because w those are things we're going to be working on going forward. And we had to handicap for them uh, uh, 
how, what we thought our chances were of achieving some of those additional uh, incentives. Uh, there are some incentives on the books in the state of Washington that we know we can take advantage of around corporate headquarters location. We have some tax incentives related to that that are uh, almost unique uh, to uh, Tacoma uh, because we're an empowerment zone under, under federal, um, uh, over, not oversight, but federal uh, overlay. Uh, and so we have some existing uh, stuff we had in place in anticipation, not of this deal, but of something like this coming along. But there are also some prospective stuff which are all hidden in the box that we can't, we can't talk about right now. But, but, let's be, but let's be clear on this, right? This is not a race to the bottom. There will be, if somebody is just looking at dollar incentives, there's somebody that's going to beat us probably by a ways, right? That's, but that's not what we're competing on. This is about culture, quality of life, and values. This is about productivity. This is about leveraging what they already have and enhancing it. So dollars is important, but in the big picture, it's less important than a qualified, happy, satisfied workforce that are coming to work every day for the next 10 years delivering what, what Amazon needs for the future. The company has said uh, that they'll make a decision in 2018. They haven't discussed with us uh, what the interim steps are going to be, and I believe they haven't discussed that with anybody. Uh, there's a guess, there are different guesses out there of how many proposals they're going to receive. I've heard as low as 150 and as high as 800. Uh, so they have some sorting to do. They have very highly qualified site selection professionals working with them at Amazon uh, to help them do that. So if it's typical, and this may be what is typical about a very atypical RFP, is we'll hear in a week or so or a month uh, about the next step. And sometimes that's a opportunity to come in and expand or explain in more detail what we've put forward. Uh, in other cases, it's, uh, they sometimes will come and start uh, kicking some tires. Uh, that's all very confidential. That part of it, I believe, what will happen now is everything has been very public to this point. The follow-on is going to be highly confidential. Uh, and we'll probably have to sign non-disclosure agreements and things like that, which is very typical in cases like this. But if they're making a decision in 2018, I would anticipate there's going to be some activity that we're going to have to be responding to uh, before the end of this year. I don't think they'll make an announcement before the end of this year. I think it'll be a 2018 uh, announcement. They want to be up and running in the, new, in the first new building by uh, the end of 2019. So to make that happen, I, you'd think probably in, easily in the first half of 2018, they're going to have to announce a decision about where HQ2 is going to be. Other questions? If, in fact, Amazon makes the wrong choice, <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that quickly, and then I'm going to ask Derek, uh, Congressman Kilmer, uh, he, he uh, sent me a note the other day that I thought was uh, kind of nailed that question, the answer to that question. Not that we ever think about not winning. We always think about winning. Um, uh, we have always been really good at rallying to projects, whether it's State Farm or Mitsui Soko or Torre or Niagara Water. Uh, we know how to do deals in Tacoma and in Pierce County. Uh, this was the biggest ever in terms of how comprehensive the response had to be and the size of the potential win. Uh, and Derek, you want to talk about one of the th couple of things you shared with me that you thought we were getting out of this in addition to the, to the win? So um, I, I'll, I'll echo what Bruce said in terms of you're always in it to win it, right? That is, that is why the community has made this investment. But you know, I think one of the, uh, one of the tenants at the Economic Development Board is you know, this is not unlike a business selling a product. You have to have a competitive product and you have to sell it well. And I think this exercise is really helpful for us in identifying the strengths of our product. We have done big things in this community. We have extraordinary assets in this community. Everything from our, our transit uh, efforts and, and infrastructure to our uh, workforce development, everything from K-12 all the way through to higher ed to what's happening with our military installations. 
We have extraordinary, extraordinary assets. And I think part of the value of this exercise is it helps us build those muscles, not just to try to secure Amazon, but to secure more opportunities down the road for this community and for this region. And I would also like to add, too, what we now have is a really thorough, comprehensive template. So when the next opportunity comes along, in addition to Amazon choosing to locate HQ2 here in Tacoma in the South Sound, we will have opportunities to just use a template and to fill in the blanks in a way that I think we have not done before. As, this, as Congressman said, you know, this is not something that we have done before because of the magnitude of the opportunity. But now we have a blueprint to work from, and I think that makes us stronger. It give, makes us more competitive with other proposals, and also, too, it will give us a chance to go recruit other companies in a, in a way that we haven't before. But one thing I do want to say again is that, you know, we are talking about Tacoma and the South Sound, but we live in a metropolitan region that is Seattle, Everett, Bellevue, and Tacoma. And I will just say right now that I think there's an opportunity for us to think regionally and to support the idea of having a large regional organization the same way that Atlanta and Denver and some of the other bigger markets approach economic development. Because in some cases, what we want is for a company to choose our region. In this case, we want them to choose Tacoma in the region. If I had my way, the entire region would have gotten behind Tacoma South Sound proposal because I think it's the best one coming out of our region. But as we talk about the future, I think there's an opportunity to really think about how a regional EDO can behave and how we're able to put forward our best foot and not necessarily just have everyone participate because we're afraid to make hard political decisions. And, and I would just kind of echo that in the sense that this was, this was a great opportunity for Tacoma South Sound to work together. But depending upon the offering, depending on what people need, we need just like we learned there, Right? We have a better understanding of, I think, I think there's folks who've been to the Centeris Data Center in Puyallup that have never been there before, right? That's an important asset for us to be aware of. Just yesterday, we were, you know, I, I met with kind of reaching out to some of the economic development organizations in Kitsap and Thurston County. And we also need to have a strong relationship with King and Snohomish County. As we look around, it's about understanding the assets that we all have and how can we bring them together to provide the most compelling solutions so people with good quality jobs can locate in our region and employ our workers. Yeah, there are discussions underway uh, in that regard. Uh, I think one of the, the lessons uh, that uh, many of us have experienced is uh, form should follow function. Uh, there are some folks who want to immediately create a new organization and then figure out what it's going to do, a big um, uh, a mega regional organization. We've been of the mind, because we've been in those conversations too, that, that let's figure out what we're going to try to accomplish together uh, before we decide what the structure is going to look like. Um, having said that, uh, when it came to uh, the 787, when it came to the, 7, the uh, uh, 767 tanker deal, when it came to the 737 MAX, when it came to the 777X, the governor's office, I'm really glad that Chris Green is here today from the governor's office, uh, we were able to come together as a multi-county region, four-county region, with the rest of the state to deliver winning proposals, winning responses to those packages. Now, those were different than this one because they were all confidential and, and we actually were pretty good at keeping it confidential in that regard as well. Uh, and so we know how to collaborate when there's a, there's a big win right in front of us across multiple counties. What we're talking about, is there a way to have a, a, a relationships and a structure in place that so, such that we can tap into that more readily and maybe, not just maybe, go on offense and not necessarily always be plan not always being reactive, be proactive. Uh, and this gets to one of the things uh, my colleagues here are talking about. This, now, we now have this template for the largest economic development project in the history of the world, which is what this Amazon project is. Uh, and, and now we can use that uh, to uh, reshape, craft and go proactively after companies that does, don't even know we're going after them. Because companies, you want to get ahead of the company decision curve. And you can do that in this business if you're smart and really well organized. So we've gotten a little bit smarter or a lot smarter, and we've gotten a whole lot better organized through this effort.
I'll, I'll give you my comments on that, and uh, my uh, good friends here uh, were part of that conversation as well, and that's a key point. There was a conversation. When the RFP arrived, and I mentioned the day it arrived, September 7th, uh, the mayor called me, and the next person to call me was the county executive, and then Derek's office called me. He was the next person. And we got rolling on putting together our response and figuring out how we were going to go about this because it was a very tight time frame. It was six weeks. That is, that's also atypical. You often, when something this big, you would normally have more time. We liked the pressure. Uh, my staff in particular loved the pressure that that, that, that put on. They, they would come in and say, I, I loved working all weekend long. It was fantastic. Uh, the city staff, the county staff, they were the same way. Uh, Derek's office, all everybody. And so um, uh, we were, um, uh, at that time, getting our own shop organized and started to have conversations with the other counties. And uh, they were not as far along as we were in terms of trying to figure out how to get after the 33 deliverables that were in this RFP. If you actually add them all up, there are 33. Uh, and you had six weeks. And, and some required a lot of research and a lot of effort and some, moving some big boulders around. And so uh, I think the story in this case was not that we didn't want to cooperate, but that we were so far down the line by the time they decided to actually do something that it, we couldn't get it to fit in. And then we focused on the jewel in the crown downtown Tacoma with ancillary benefits and properties that could be brought to bear with the complete build out for Amazon over time. And they fell uh, uh, into the situation of putting forward at last I heard, nine different locations, nine different cities in King and Snohomish County, we felt at, really at that point we wanted to be uh, responsive to the RFP, having a prioritization that is downtown Tacoma and, and running with that. And we contacted Amazon and, and told them that was going to be our approach. And, they gave us the thumbs up on that. They didn't give a thumbs down what was happening in King and Snohomish. They just said, hey, we get why you're doing what you're doing. Go for it. I'll just add to um, what Bruce Kendall just said. We did consider doing something regionally, but I think, as he said, at the end of the day, our proposal was stronger as Tacoma South Sound. And, you know, we want to be regional partners. We think that's important. But our job is to make sure that the people that we represent have the best opportunity to get access to these jobs. And so our proposal was stronger, and we decided to go it alone. Two things. First of all, to set the record straight, Derek called me, then I called you. Just so I want to make sure that was all. But, but I was texting them at yeah. 7 in the morning. So I think we, we need to understand that the solution needs to fit the request as well. And there were a number of folks who, who had contacted me, some of whom are actually even in this room and maybe standing close by me, um, that said their assessment and their conversations with various Amazon officials felt like that, that the three-county solution might not be the best. That's why we took off very fast at the Tacoma South Sound solution. I think it's a great solution for what the company was asking for. Now, as Bruce pointed out, there are other offerings, think large aircraft and other things, where there'll be a three-county solution. Or there might be future ones where it's us and Thurston County or us and Thurston and Kitsap. The solution has to fit the request. But the relationships across all of those counties that enable us to come together, to understand the assets, and to come together and offer a compelling solution, that's the key. Well, we have two hours left, so we'll... <laughs> where's, the, where's, the, where's, the where's the box? Yeah, where's the box? Yeah, the box is a, all right, the box is being guarded over there. Digital yeah, tracker yeah. on there. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this was a big team effort, and a lot of those 50 people I talked about are in this room, so thank you for what you've done. Uh, we're at the end of the beginning. Uh, we now move to stage two, and thank you for the question uh, earlier, where we are anticipating or will be anticipating the follow-on call from Amazon, which will be generally, it's more, uh, you know, let's dig into the details a little bit deeper. So. Um, uh, we will not hold a press conference when that happens, but we'll let you know when we get the win. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.
Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go,